Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to Figma Beginner to Master Course. So today we're going to look at building a typography system that goes along with our color system that we did in our last session. I'll link that video somewhere here. But today we're going to look at specifically when we're creating a design for like a website or a mobile app or something like that, we should create a certain scale and differentiate between the different text hierarchy. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, the first thing I want you to be familiar with is the different font categories. Now, these are kind of the six font categories that we have, and it's serif, sans serif, slab serif, script, handwritten, and decorative. Uh, there might be some more out there like graffiti or stuff like that, but these are kind of acknowledged as the main six. Now, when you're choosing a font that you want to use for your designs, you should also think about kind of the font psychology, if you will, and what you want to convey as a message. If this is a medical brand selling like medical insurance, I probably won't want to use handwritten or decorative because that feels a bit more just childlike, youthful, fun, energetic. I want to use something that has a bit more, you know, kind of gravitas to it like maybe a sans serif or a slab serif so these are kind of the font categories that i want you to think of and think about firstly what are you trying to convey what is the message um you can use a combination of the two as well these also have kind of a different legibility to them something that is sans serif is usually easiest to read because it's always the same line thickness going through whereas a handwritten one or a decorative one could change so for some people it might be harder to read when we are creating our typography hierarchy, we're basically going to be creating what we're using for headings, for body, for subtitles, for captions, all of that. And these are the different differentiators that we can use. First of all is size. It's kind of the main one that we think about, right? If it's a heading, it's bigger, it's more important. If it's the body, it's a bit smaller because it's just the text. The next thing we can also think about is the weight. So is it bold? Is it light? And that's, again, something that we want to make sure that when we choose the font that we want to use, it needs to have those different weight options for us. Some of them can have like 15 different ones some of them can just have three. Three might be enough, but just be aware. We can also use color to differentiate inside of our text hierarchy. We want to make sure that we always have contrast between them. So if one thing is 20 points and one thing is 21 points, that's not a big enough difference. No one's going to notice that. So we want to make sure there is that contrast between them. We can also use case in our hierarchy to help with the differentiation. For instance, if everything is uppercase, we can use that for little captions or stuff like that. And the last thing is position and alignment. Just kind of where we place the text. Is it center aligned? Is it left aligned? Are we positioning it at the top, at the bottom of the text? Stuff like that. So before we go in to create our actual typography styles, I want to just teach you how to create styles in Figma. Styles are basically reusable properties in Figma. We can create them for fills, strokes, effects, grids, and for text. We basically set a set amount of properties and we say these properties are called my font and you will always use them when you click on my font rather than having to do those numbers on your own. So if we jump into Figma into our exercise file, you've got this little um, frame here ready for you to create these styles. So let's say I want to create one title and one body. I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to give it loads of different properties. So I'm going to create a select a font. I'm just clicking down on my keyboard. Let's say this one. Uh, and I want it to be, let's say 34 because it's a title. I want the line height to be 40 and I want the letter spacing to be a bit wider. Yeah, that's great for me. Like I did before with colors, if you followed along, I've got these four squares here that are called style. I click on that and then you see it says no textiles currently because I have none. So I'm gonna add a new one. I'm gonna click on plus and then give it a name. I'm gonna say my title. I can add a description if I want, use four titles and then create the style. Now you see over here, I don't have any of the text properties anymore, but it just says my title. If I click out on the canvas, I'll see textiles, my title. And you see the number here. So 34 is the text size. And then the number after the slash is the line height. If I go into here, I can edit this. I can, you know, change all of the properties and add even more. Say this one always has this kind of decoration or this kind of case to it. Now we're going to create another one and I'm going to show you a little trick. If you follow along with my videos, you know that to create a folder in Figma, you just use a slash in the naming. So what if I want to create a really neat, you know, system and everything into folders? So I'm going to do this again for this one. Just going to click down on my keyboard until I get to some sort of font. Um, I'm going to say this is bold. This letter space, this line height and uh, 20 letter spacing. I'm going to click here and go plus. Now, instead of just writing my body, I'm going to say my font slash my body. I click on create style. And when I click out, now you see I've got a little folder here. OK, 
okay? I can drag my title into there as well, and now both of them are in there, which means if I click on T and I'm gonna just create some text, I'm just gonna write um, hello. When I select a style, you can see it's under the folder, my fonts. Yeah, so I can just see it there. I can also search for it. So let's say search for body, found it there. Yeah. If I want to detach a font, so for example, if I'm in a land far, far away, I want to detach it, I just hover over this and detach, and then I can get the properties again. So now that we've learned how to create these styles, I want to move on to create our actual typography style. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete these two ones. So I'm going to click here and just say delete two styles. So I've got a fresh canvas. The first thing we want to do is create our base scale. And that means choosing our font and then choosing the body type size okay so we're going to start from that one and then create the headings and create the kind of ones that are smaller than that if we scroll down in our file you will find this little typography frame that has everything ready to go in it for you to use now i've made this for you to be able to reuse it over and over when you're creating type styles so the first thing i want you to do is just duplicate this so you have your original one and you can work from a new one so i'm going to hold down alt and just drag to create a new one and then the original one i'm just going to hide it so I'm just going to be working with this one. Now I'm going to hold down command and just drag and select everything here. Now I'm going to use one sort of font for everything. So I'm just going to click on plus here and I'm actually, you know what, I'm happy with poppins. I'm going to use poppins for everything. So that is the font that I've selected. The next thing I'm going to do is select the body font that I want to go with. Now, if you're designing for web, um, it's best to use your body font at around 16, somewhere between 15 and 18 usually if you're designing for mobile that's sometimes a bit bigger than that but 16 is kind of a safe number to use so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select everything again so i have one clear canvas everything is on poppins regular and 16. next thing we're going to do is select our scale so there is a classic typographic scale that's been used in designs for centuries and it has kind of the set steps and the jumps between the fonts that you want to use and it's like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 18, 21, 24, 30, 36, 48, 60, 72 and then sometimes it expands to 96 and 144 but we have all of these tools that can help us really find that harmonious scale so the jumps between the body and the headings make sense. So I'm going to use a tool that you might have seen before called type scale. Now in type scale, what you can do is you enter your base size. So my base size is 16 and that is hundred percent and one EM. Um, so I'm going to say base size. I'm going to use this font, which is Poppins. My base weight is 400. And then I want it to say something. So right now it says a visual type scale. Maybe I want to write the name of my brand or something just to see how it looks. So I'm going to say Figma master. Okay, so now we've got just a scale here ready to go for us, right? And we've got these different scales here. So we've got minor second, major third, minor third, major third, and you might be familiar with these from music because they're kind of the same thing. If I go back into Figma, you'll see that this is the scale factor, this is the jump. So it's gonna say on a major third, it's gonna jump up 1.5. 250 every time it goes up like we said before with colors you can do whatever works for you and you can add more at the top more at the bottom if you need more or less variations within your type scale so let's have a look at major third i think major third is nice we've got 16 to 20 to 25 31 39 48 let's have a look augmented fourth Sometimes I think perfect fifth gives you the most round numbers. So 16, 24, 36, 54, you don't have those kinds of after the dot, but again, we can adjust it. Um, but with perfect fifth, you usually get a really massive one at the top. So I'm gonna go with kind of the classic. I'm gonna go with major third. So I'm gonna split my screen here and I'm gonna show you how I do this. I'm gonna really zoom out and I'm gonna go one by one. I'm gonna hold down command and just select all of my bodies are 16, fine. Now I move up to H five all of my h5s need to be 20 pixels so i'm going to do 20. my h4s the next one up need to be 25 so i'm going to say 25. my h3s i want them to be 31.25 so i'm going to round it down and just say 31. my h2s right now it's 39.06 so i'm going to say 39 and then my h1s 48. Perfect. Also, when you're designing for web, remember that H1 should only be used once on a page. So really make a count. Now I'm going to go to the ones that are a bit lower. So my body is 16. What is subtitle? So I'm going to say subtitle is 12.8. So maybe 
I'm maybe gonna make it 13 for this one. And then caption is 10.24. So 10 is a bit small for me, so I'm gonna say 11. And then 8.19, that's a bit small. Let's say 10. So I know that between caption and footnote, I don't have a big differentiation in size. So I'm gonna make sure to remember that for later and give them a differentiation in a different way. Perfect, we've got the size scale. Obviously this isn't enough. We wanna find a bit more differentiation. So the next thing we're gonna look at is weight. So what I like to do is give myself all of the options and then play around with it later. So what I'm gonna do is just holding down command, select all of the ones that have the word bold next to them and just select the normal bold. I'm also gonna align them to the left. And then select all of the light ones and give them a light. And just align these. So that's really good, right? But let's see how I can differentiate this a bit more. I think that the headings actually, maybe up till H3, maybe they can use a black. Hmm, or maybe this one and this one, I want them to have an extra bold. So they're still bold, but I'm kind of getting more out of that boldness when I use heavy or black instead of just bold. So I think I like that. And then maybe for actually the smaller ones, maybe I'm not gonna use bold because that kind of muddles it. Maybe I use semi-bold. And maybe for footnote, I even just use medium. Again, if you have these, use them. You don't have to use them, but if you have a font that gives you all of this wide range of weights, just use it. Um, and same thing for the lights. Maybe um, maybe for the H1, I can go even lighter, go extra thin. Uh, I wouldn't go too thin with the smaller fonts because then you won't be able to see it. The next thing we're gonna do is look at the line height. Now, if you've watched my text video, you know that the default line height is 1.5 times the actual text size. And that is good for us for body, but for headings, we usually want it to be a tiny bit smaller. So like it says here, the ideal line height for headings would be less spacing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go row by row and change the line height. Now, remember that Figma can use arithmetic. So if I say the line height here is 20 times 1.2, the line height here is 25 times 1.2. The line height here is 31 times 1.2. And then you can see how the bounding box really shrinks. So 39 times 1.2. And this one you really see the difference. So 48 times 1.2. Yeah, that's already just a lot smaller. Then actually with the subtitle caption and footnote, I like to give it a bit more breathing room. So instead of 1.5, I'm gonna give it 1.8. And again, it's such a tiny change, but it actually makes a big difference. The 13 times 1.8, 11 times 1.8. And then that means that if we've got two rows of something that's using, let's say, footnote, this has a bit more breathing room between it and it's easier to read. Now, you can stop here if you want, but what I would suggest is now move on to some case and some customization. First of all, really important to remember, if you're designing for multiple device sizes, now is the time to do that. Now is the time to stop and create this exact same thing for that device size. Um, so now I'm gonna just remove some things. So first of all, I don't think I need lights for any of the headlines. So I'm just gonna remove that. Maybe this one as well, I don't need this heading. Maybe, maybe even regular, I don't need regular for H1 and H2. And then I feel like, remember we said before how footnote and caption had a really similar um, text size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the footnotes and actually give them some capitalization. So I'm gonna say you're always uppercase and maybe even I get it a bit of, bit of letter spacing. Yeah, I like that. So you see, even though caption and footnote have very similar text size, one is 12 and one is 11, we still have a really clear differentiation between the two so now we can use them in different places and it's still uh, the user will will notice that it's a different thing it's different type of text now if we want to go in and also use some colors we may decide you know what my h1 i don't want it to be a sans serif i want my h1 to be really decorative and i'm going to use um something like this for it go for it just do it and now you've already have the boldness the size selected everything so it's just about changing the font if you want to do that now, at this point, we've created our typography scale, right? So we're done. We have this, it's ready to go. The next step is creating styles out of this in order to make them reusable and in our file so others can use it later. Now, if you look at the um, little frame that I created for you, they're all named really in a lovely way with the slash ready to go. So we can go one by one and create the styles like we learned before, or we could use 
plugin. I'm going to introduce you to a plugin called Styler. So to get a plugin, you go into the resources tool, plugins, and then just search for Styler. So when you run Styler, you're going to have extract, generate, apply, detach, and remove. We want to use generate. But in order to do that, we need to select all of our text boxes and then generate styles from them. So I'm going to just click on my canvas and then I'm going to go into my typography frame and just select all of them from the layers panel. So you see all of our text kind of boxes are selected. Now I'm going to right click plugins styler. If you don't have this when you right click because this is where your recent plugins are, you could just do it from the resources tool like before. So you go to styler and then generate styles. Once I do that, you'll see at the bottom it says created 20. If I click out on my canvas, voila, we got all our textiles. Woohoo! So if I just drop in a text box and I just write hello and then I click on my styles, I've got everything. So now if I know I need, let's say a footnote, I just say footnote and then I got them all. I'm going to say regular and you'll see automatically it changed the case and I can change it to body light. I can change it to H2. And like we said before, we can add descriptions. So I can say body bold, um, only used for warnings. Yeah. And then when someone wants to choose it, if I go in here, and hover over uh, body bold, you see it says only use for warnings, yeah? And that is it. In a really short session, we've created this big typography system that contains loads of different headings, captions, footnotes, body, and they're all differentiated by different sizes, weights, line heights, and case and capitalization. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. See you at the next one.